Hey everyone, last weekend I dove right in and I did a 30 item weekend warrior declutter challenge where I tackled 30 items of clutter in our home in a very short amount of time. This challenge is perfect if you simply want to stay ahead of clutter in your home. So we all know now that the clutter comes in so quick and so often that sometimes just these little ones, these little challenges, just basically stay ahead of it. But secondly, this is a great challenge to do if you are overwhelmed. So if you're overwhelmed and you don't know where to start with either just one room or the entire house, this is a perfect challenge to just like get you going and kickstart in an easy, not so overwhelming overwhelming way. One of the big reasons I love this challenge is because it sort of focuses on just some low hanging fruit. So it's not like a deep dive into a specific category. It usually isn't super emotional. It's not like a super intense one and it's not super time consuming. And making the house a little bit simpler and kickstarting, maybe kickstarting a deeper declutter further along. My name is Marianne. I live here in Canada with my husband and two kids ages five and six. No, <laughs> six and seven. And I make videos on simplifying life and motherhood through easy organization and decluttering. Let's jump right in. So the first thing I did was grab my tracker. I grabbed my basket to carry all my items around and I simply chose a space. So I knew right off the bat, I knew there was something in the bathroom in the medicine cabinet I wanna quickly look at. This is a great one to do at the end of the season at the end of like winter going into spring cause like cold flu season is slowly wrapping up. But I knew there were a couple items I wanted to get rid of to get rid of. Number one, we had a ton of Advil and Tylenol. So I ended up finding that there was a couple that were just barely like didn't even have one like dose left. So I let those go and we would have fresh for next time we needed it. And secondly, and ironically, if you remember, call in my last video, I talked about items that I brought into house and I bought in bought new eardrops for the kids. Well, when I went back into the medicine cabinet, I realized I had the exact same drops already that I had bought from last year. I was so mad at myself and they technically, yes, were expired, but honestly, I probably would have given them a shot before simply buying, I mean, spending almost $30 on new ones. So as much as I'm mad at myself, I think this is a great example that how easily double purchases can happen. I am letting go of this one that's expired and I will keep my almost full bottle of my one that doesn't expire until next year and will carry on and it will be a lesson. And honestly, I find this, I wanted to share it. As much as I didn't want to share this story, I did want to share it because medicine cabinets are such, this happens in medicine cabinets, I feel like all the time, because typically when we or our kids are sick, we're not like thinking at full capacity, right? We are overwhelmed. We may or may have not just cleaned up vomit. You know, we're not feeling maybe good ourselves and we're not like, thinking, oh, I'm gonna go in and like do a big clean sweep of my medicine cabinet. It's like, just grab what you can or go to the store and buy it if you think if you think it's gonna make you feel better. If you haven't done it yet for this year, go do your medicine cabinet before summer hits. Another great category to do in the spring is winter outerwear. We have a basket with our like kind of day-to-day -day stuff that we li that lives right by our garage door, which is like our main entry point most of the time. And that basket still had like a lot of like toques and mitts and that sort of thing. So I went through that basket. I sorted into categories of things we definitely wanted to keep for next year, you know, like all of our standard mitts and stuff like that. And then spring items that maybe I still wanted to keep by the door. And then I wanted went to our more permanent baskets, which are in, in our like actual main entryway closet. And we each have a basket um, at the top of that, of that closet where we keep all of our outerwear, like items, accessories. Um, Scott and I share a basket, but the kids have each have their own. Once I did a quick review, I saw that Leo, for example, had a ton of toques. So all I did was I knew that I think he ended up with five toques. And I'm like, that is a lot of toques. It's good to have extra, but that was just too many. We don't need five toques for one kid. So I let go of, I just chose basically the one that he wore the least this year. And then I think was getting like a bit snug on him and then kept the other four. The other items I had were I had two mitts that I know I could not find the pair. I've spent months and I'm so mad at myself because I have spent months looking for the other item to this. And I'm sure they're in someone else's house. <laughs> they got lost at school and they're probably at someone else's house right now. Um, but I'm pretty much giving up on those and I know I can let those go. Another thing was uh, my mom just even like six weeks ago or a couple months ago at the end of the season, she's like, Annie Rose needs more toques that cover her ears. Mom went out 
and bought her two new toques that looked very warm and they were very cute and cozy and she refused to wear both of them. She said they were too itchy or they were too tight or you know whatever kids say when they just don't like the feeling of something which is fair enough. So the other toque was purple and actually Leo loved it and he like grabbed right onto it so he is I put that into his basket and he will wear that next year. However this pink one <laughs> Leo would also was not about to was not going to wear and Amy Rose just like I could not get her to wear it. I tried so many times and I thought you know what instead of me hanging on to this for another year trying to force it on her it's brand new it's never been worn and I know that there's other little girls in this world that would benefit from using this next year so and I already know Annie Rose has two other toques that are just fine so I'm gonna pass this on uh, for someone else to use randomly there was a tiara or a crown in there of Annie Rose's I don't remember where it came from. She will never keep these on because like, you know how they're so tight on their heads if you've ever had a kid who wore a crown. Uh, so I'm just gonna pass that right along and she'll never remember and I honestly didn't even know it was in there. This one I'm mad at myself. I gave away my coat at the end of, kind of like the middle of the winter I guess. I shared it before and I forgot to reattach the hood that went with it. Has anyone else ever done that? I've done it before. I wish I could say I've never happened to me but I have done it before because I take them off and put them in that basket and then when I go to pass them along or donate them, um, I forgot to reattach it. So mad at myself, but you know what? Gotta give yourself grace because we all make mistakes. Another thing we had was a ton of um, splash pants, like too many splash pants. Like why do, have the, why do we have this many splash pants? So I just chose, I think I still kept three pair. I think there's a pair at school for sure. And I got rid of basically the smallest pair. Pair. So these are 5T, which I technically probably could have squeezed them into, but they're the smallest ones where the other ones they will uh, like be able to use for future years. And I know someone else will love these splash pants. There's also a pair of Scott's like work glasses, safety glasses, which I'm guessing Leo probably, they were had in his basket. So I'm guessing he was like pretending to play basketball one day and had them on. Scott has probably 10 other pairs like this in the garage so we can pass those on. Uh, two pairs of little kid sunglasses, which are so, so cute. Little kid sunglasses are just the cutest, but I have at least two other pair, I think three other pair. So I know, and these ones are super tight. We got them when they were maybe like two years old. So I know that they can be passed along. This one's kind of gross. It's insole, boot insoles. These were for my Blundstones, um, plus a random kid one. Gross to look at. However, we come across this a surprising amount in people's closets, so I wanted to share it. These are three random things. I didn't don't need these for my boots. I took them out to see if it would be better without them, and it is. I like them better without them, so I know I'll never put them back in. I'm gonna wear those boots until they absolutely die. So all three of those items are also gonna go. Next, we headed down into our toy section, which if you remember, we reorganized and kind of reset up this past Christmas. And I absolutely love the setup. It's worked amazingly the entire spring and winter, and I'm so happy with it. However, one thing we did recently was we had a toy rotation bin still in our basement, and I felt like we just really didn't need it anymore. The stuffed items kind of just sat there. I forgot the bin even existed, and I thought, why am I wasting space with this? So basically, I just shoved everything in a bag and kept brought it upstairs and like shoved it behind our toy box for a month where it has been sitting. So I thought, let's dig that out and like, let's actually go through it and think, do we want these items? There were some easy, again, low hanging fruit that I know we don't need. And it's like, I've just been kind of like putting off getting rid of it sort of. So these two hangers, when we had the toy, when the kids had a toy room downstairs, there was a little bar and we hung Annie Rose's um, like play like costumes and stuff, dresses um, on these hangers. And it was so cute. I loved it so much. And I love these cute pink hangers, but realistically we don't have anywhere to hang kids stuff anymore. I know they could go. It was like, I was just kind of hanging onto them because we've had them for so long. Do you ever have that where it's just like, I've just had this for so long and it feels like it's part of you and part of your house and part of your family, but really we don't need these hangers so they can go. Also a stuffed animal. They have a trillion stuffed animals, which I'm actually pretty respectful of. They like stuffed animals. I'm fine with it. I think they play with them and I think they're great for play. However, this one I know for a fact, like I'm pretty sure it just came from my aunt is in a retirement home and I'm pretty sure it just like came from her room one day. Like I think someone gifted to her and then she gives the kids one day. I don't know, but they have never like named it. They've never slept with it ever, which is a, like a, usually a sign if it's never been in their bed and they've slept with it, it's usually not that important. And I know I can get rid of it and they will never, absolutely never ask because they'll never remember. 
Another thing we had was a cape that my mom had made for Leo when he was probably four years old and went through, you know, how they go through a big um, superhero phase and they absolutely love it. And it's a super simple, classic red cape, which he loved. And we have so many photos and videos of him in it. And he's been long past this phase, but it's like I kept it because I don't know, it just, again, it was kind of like a sentimental a bit, but realistically, he's never gonna use it anymore. And I know that it's such a cool cape that I know other kids um, will love it. So I'm gonna pass that along so someone else can enjoy it. Last category was books. So there were a few right off the bat that were in that toy rotation bin that I know we just like weren't gonna read again, basically. Um, we love books, we love reading. You know how some books, it's just like, once you've read them maybe 10 times, you're like, okay, I'm okay with that. Some are classics that we know always wanna keep or wanna keep for a really long time the kids are grown up. But then there's some that just like, that doesn't, it's not sentimental to us, I guess, is what it is. So I just picked like a few front right from that bag, right from that, that toy rotation bin that I knew could go. And then I remembered I had some in both of their bedrooms. So they have a book basket in each of their bedrooms. And I thought, you know what? I know there are some upstairs. So I ran upstairs quickly, went into those baskets and grabbed ones that I know that they aren't gonna read again. Combined with that, we also had a couple of chickadee magazines. So the kids get these magazines uh, as a subscription. They're done with these couple of them. So, and they're still in great shape. So I am going to just tear off of our name and address and I'll put them in with the other books probably into our little free library. So I ended up counting my items and I had exactly 30 items. We tackled our challenge, our weekend warrior challenge. It took no time and really it was again, like I said, not intense because it was just, I just focused on like easy surface level. So if you're in a rush or if you are overwhelmed and looking for something just to get you started, um, I think this is a great challenge to try. Any questions or comments, please leave them below. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys very, very soon. Bye.